Hey everyone, welcome back to the Stormies and our reveal of the finalists. Congratulations to all of you who made it. Um, we're so thrilled that you uh, are a part of this, that you submitted your images, and I'm so excited for you to see if you made it. To those that did, well done. To those that didn't, thank you for submitting. Please keep trying. Get out there this year. Maybe you are already. Kick some butt and come back next year and let's do it again. Critiques were fun. We had some surprise guests I hope you enjoy. Unfortunately, Linda was under the weather and couldn't join us for the finalist review. So we all hope she's getting better. And before we jump in, I just wanted to mention one more time our sponsors, Tempest Weatherflow. They donated two of them. You can go get one right now for a discount and support our sponsor there, ImageCraft, who supplies the metal prints for our winners. They are based here in Phoenix and my favorite printer, and I just love them so much, so thank them for being a part of that. Uh, to Extreme Tornado Tours and Nick Dreischman, he um, helps with the tornado critique, and he supplies part of the award for the Tornado Photo of the Year. Thank you, Nick. Uh, appreciate your friendship and, and being a part of our contest. And to Rich with Lightning Trigger 4, thanks for once again donating the best lightning trigger out there. So without further ado, here are the finalists. These are the top 10 uh, best tornado photos of the year. And I, we were just talking before we started recording that um, it wasn't the greatest year on the planes for tornadoes. So um, the variety was definitely down this year, but um, we, we still have a lot of good ones. So I'm gonna jump right in to um, this one that I missed. Nick, you probably, you weren't on this one either, right? No, no, we had the same situation. Yeah, we had a April couple, 12th. A couple of tough changeover days. Um, this one was before our actual season. So um, right. yeah, unfortunately missed out on this one. That's during my really busy time. It's hard to get a day off, but yeah, uh, it's a beautiful tornado. This was Iowa, right? Yeah, I believe so. I forget what the name of it was, the town, what it was called. I, it's, yeah. It should be. If I was there, I'm sure I would remember it. Right. Yeah, and... I'm bad with that on these right now too. I was trying to remember a couple of them. Hard you find out your, do you think you find your brain like losing those things that you used to like the dates of big days and the names of all those things like are always ingrained in your brain. But now as you get along, they start to just, well, I forget. I'm so bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a lovely tornado from Iowa it's early in the year. Um, this photographer obviously had a great, great uh, spot and, um, I'm assuming it looks like less than, you know, it looks like a half mile to a mile away on this thing. I'm not always super close, so that might be easier for you guys to judge uh, how close he was to this. But um, a very um, kind of cookie, not cookie cutter, but I mean, a very photogenic, ideal looking, you know, right. cliche looking kind of tornado, which is I love to see that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, right. You know, your standard, just really cylindrical laminar. It's got a little bit of lean forward on it, really big dust cloud there. Um, it's it, like you said, it's hard to say distance here. They are pretty close, whatever they're doing. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was kind of similar with this one on the locket day in 2021 in terms of, of proximity. Um, so like you said, it's a great photo um, just in terms of the subject matter. Yeah. Um, you know, we could start getting into kind of the the details and critiquing a couple of things. I think that there's some contrast adjustment and um, some exposure stuff that could have been done differently in camera uh, beyond yeah. post. And again, like with the proximity thing, we really do we know, you know, what wide angle they're using. It's obviously a wide uh, it says angle. it was at 59 millimeters. So that's actually fairly okay. tight. So uh, or at least, you know, instead of like a really right. wide angle. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I would still imagine that they have pretty good proximity here. So yeah, it's a great photo. It's nice to see kind of the Gus Nato stuff out in front. It almost looks like yes. a little another cone rotating around up there, the collar cloud or something like that. But um, it's a cool photo. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mean tornado. I was down in Texas that day and got my ugliest tornado of the year. It's that's closer to the tie my home cooking, uh, you know, the, <laughs> so I, I chose that target than drive all the way to Iowa. But uh, yeah, classic mean tornado and when you're in tornado alley you kind of just take what mother nature gives you which is usually a flat horizon with a few trees and a badass tornado little more clarity ramped up than i than i like but thank god he didn't go nuts or this person didn't yes. go nuts with it uh right. yeah so i really appreciate that um 
look like it's might be focused more around the debris. Maybe even, and I don't see any clarity really around the top, which I love. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm envious. Wish I would have been on that tornado. Yeah, I agree. From a photography standpoint, I think um, some of that stuff you guys said is right on. Um, there, um, it's really easy to bring up the shadows on these things, like globally in Lightroom, and you can kind of see that it's a little like maybe brighter here, and then um, it kind of creates a little bit of a halo effect. But again, you know, sometimes it's hard to completely know that for sure. Maybe there's some lighter dust that was getting pulled in across that makes it look like that. It's really definitely hard to to, to know for sure. And and the only the one thing I always say when I'm in looking at these photos is these situations are so fast, so like frenetic, adrenaline rushing, right. especially when you're this close that getting your settings perfectly perfect is is tough. Like you just have to be used to doing it all the time for years to be able to be like, oh, I know exactly how to do this because it's dark. Right. You know, this person's at F63 ISO 400 and still 1 40th of a second. So it's still a slow shutter speed. If they had a tripod, that's great because, you know, it looks like the trees are somewhat, you know, in focus and stuff. And so that's the tough part. And I and, and we kind of talk about that in a couple other images, too, um, coming up. So congrats to this person. We'll go on to the next one. Um, I think um, we were talking about this one, me and um, the other judges before, because this photo is also from a photographer of the year um, top finalist as well. Um, I think what I had thought about when I first saw this photo is spectacular. Um, this is, you know, I was south, of course. Hank was right there. To me, catching a beautiful white tornado with this amazing cloud of dust underneath it, and then it partially obscur obscures this turbine is about, is, you know, one of the most, in, like one in a million kind of moment. I'm sure there's a lot of those one in a million kind of moments out there, you know, but right. Um, but this is just spectacular. And the only real beef I ever had with this photo is that I would love to kind of see it cropped up just a little bit more, maybe like halfway up where mm -hmm. I don't, because the foreground to me, you know, there's not much going on there, but this is just um, really, really well done. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on the cropping there on this one too. This one certainly stood out to me um, out of all the finalist photos mm -hmm. that I saw here. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of familiar with this person's style and I do really like it a lot. There's like a softness um, in the clouds that, that I appreciate. Yeah. Um, and like we've kind of talked about before, a lot of people get a little bit crazy on, on the clarity slider. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm certainly one of them at times. I need to watch that too. <laughs> but I really appreciate like their exposure on this one. I love how bright white the turbines yeah. are. And of course th it gives a lot of like depth aspect to have that, debris cloud actually enveloped yes. and it gives a really good sense of um, height, which is really cool. Um, I don't see much wrong with the photo. I, you know, sometimes storms get pretty darn blue there, but I'm wondering if there was maybe some contrast or saturation that yep. might've gotten slightly overdone there. Um, yep. But yeah, no, I, and I definitely agree with the crop portion too. I think it could have pulled up on the crop a little bit and kept that green foreground. Yep. Yeah, yeah, beautiful shot. And if you're looking to the right, it looks like they got that little gust nado. Yeah, might I see have that. even been might have oh, been yeah. a tornado. From my perspective, it looked like a gust nado uh, when I was on the scene. Um, I don't mind like, an, and we were doing the lightning one last one, and I don't mind seeing like some extra crop in the ground. Like, and I actually like seeing the crops like laying down. It, it makes me feel like I'm there. Mm -hmm. versus looking at it on Instagram. So I actually like a little bit more of the earth. The blue, um, to me, it feels like uh, he didn't, this person, I don't even know, you know, yeah. boy or girl, I, like they don't need to do that. It's, it's kind of things that everybody does nowadays. Yeah. And so you almost have to do that because nobody knows that that's not real. So mm -hmm. they yeah. well, I mean, you've seen the sunsets, like these ridiculous sunsets that just yes. are colors that aren't even in the, in the you know the light spectrum, and people think yeah. that. So, uh, but I feel it's a it's a little too much back off on the saturation and you've got a perfect shot yeah i think if you look at the blues and the greens it probably feels like yeah maybe the saturation kind of overall there was you know up a little bit but i mean you know this is why i love having um you guys on especially you know kind of being around tornadoes all the time especially what nick said about you know the perspective of being able to see the height Hank said earlier you know sometimes you just stuck with what you got out there a flat foreground and some distant trees right this actually shows you almost a 3d effect of where this is because it's hitting this windmill out there and just the idea um nick of what you said is like 
you can see that it's not actually that tall. Like if you had nothing around it, you would probably think this thing is just monstrosity, like really tall tornado. Right. But the fact that almost a third of it is taken up by a turbine and then it stops up here or it gets at least gets into the cloud up there is like it's they, they aren't that big sometimes, especially not when the faces one. are really yeah. not that one. They yeah. can, not that one. They, they can, can be. They yeah, can be. But but that one, it does really give that sense of scale. And yeah. I'm a big su I'm a big sucker for any like wrapping mesocyclone above a tornado. So yeah. I mean, as far as you know, subject matter, that's a that's a A plus there. Yeah. But um, yeah, and all the the dancing of the clouds, like I love that that's in the shot, you know, because the whole yeah. right side, this this crazy turbulence that you have in the cloud, and then if and then another thing that's really special about this event is the mesocyclone above the tornado. Like, look how to the left. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's straight up. So yeah. you could have been, that's why everybody was so comfortable. I was right next to it because you could look up and see, well, there's no way it's, yeah. it's coming this way. Cause if now, if that tornado was to the right underneath all that dark yeah. darkness, that's when you're, you're, you're going to be back off. So it really captured that moment uh, that, you know, that uh, the special moment that a lot of us chasers had. Yeah. yeah. And this is a this is a spot, at least for me and my style of chasing, where I'm generally like try to be out front and stuff. I'm not usually here. And these are the moments where I do wish sometimes that um, I would get more of these views because time lapsing the backside of this with that churning cloud and that. I mean, my God, like just everything you said, like you basically could look straight up and see how that updraft is right on the edge of that tornado and how it would go by oh, just this gnarly cloud so different than what you see on the front um generally with the mothership kind of supercell structure and then the light on the back is always yeah. so great you rock you like to be in front of it sometimes but on the back sometimes the light is just so much better it's all about having that light too yeah you know it's yeah. just it's going to bring out all your definition in the clouds which is like brings in a lot of drama and so it's yep. by far my favorite place to view a tornado from. Um, a yep. lot of people will say they, you know, prefer Barry's cage and that type of thing. But man, yeah, I get in front of a tornado and uh, get some of that light to to see. Like, if you were able to do a, I know you've done some really great time lapse stuff with tornado. Both of you guys have, but um, man, to see one of you guys put your best into a scene like this would just be. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? And I actually tried that this year, but that um, did not go well. And that's a whole other discussion. So here's another <laughs> shot of Crowell. Okay. And um, this one is definitely, you know, like it's funny because the last one I would have said, you know, less foreground. This one um, is almost perfect. I think um, it could do um, a little bit less. But at the same time, the whole focus of this shot is the tornado and the turbine and that cloud of dust. The um, the negatives about this one is just the you know it's it's kind of out of focus or just um, maybe some maybe it was handheld. Um, again, these are one of those situations where sometimes you have no choice but to just shoot out the window or whatever um, because this is happening and it's engulfing that turbine and you have almost you know seconds to get that shot before it's gone. Actually, probably half a second and then it's probably by. So. Um, so this was probably difficult to shoot, but I do love the crop and framing of this one. I just wish it had been just a little bit sharper. Yeah, on this one, I think that there's been a little bit of cropping that's going on. I'm not sure if it was the uh, the same person um, as the last photo that we critiqued. I'd imagine it probably is. Yeah. And so I think there's a little bit of cropping going on there. Like, you know, from a subject matter perspective, it's crazy. Bright white cone tornado, huge, yep. very, very, you know, this. contrasted debris cloud literally enveloping a turbine yeah and i mean we all know how tall those turbines are so that's just crazy to like see just the the dust yeah. cloud. so from like an evidential perspective this is a wonderful photo yeah I, i'm not sure if i would you know put it over on the art slider side of things yeah. not very far but it, it is a wonderful photo for sure yeah. is this the same guy it looks like you know what i think it is actually because the yeah. it's the same um yep it is same, same color, color so. same, yeah. Yep. Well, I like the other one better. Uh, this yep. is a great shot. Same. I like the I like the wide one better. Yep. Yeah, agreed. agreed. All right, so here goes um, Morton one, another um, tornado that I was. Um, well, this one I was at just like the last one, but I had a nice <laughs> dusty um, field obscuring my every view of it. So, um, but Hank wasn't. He was there. I I really like this photo just in general. Again, I could probably say crop it up to the left a little bit, but. What I really like is I love, um, I really like the police cars, the lights up 
up the road, kind of giving this idea of danger and maybe stopping people from going. I love it looks like there's probably hailstones on the road, I'm assuming. Um, and then some of the other photos that, you know, we saw of it was very, you know, the, the contrast and the clarity was really increased. And this was already a very contrasting gnarly tornado when you're up close, it, it, right. judging at least from people like Hank's videos and other people that were right there. So um, you didn't need to really do a ton of that kind of thing. But I really, I really enjoyed this one, just kind of the, even if it's down the road with the, with the other vehicles. Yeah, um, definitely contrasted from some of the other photos I've seen. I too missed this tornado. This was a changeover day for the oh, tourists. I'm so sorry. Dude. But yeah, <laughs> it, it happens, you know, every once in a while you have those years. And so when we're changing over tours, we're back home in our host city of Oklahoma City or Denver. And that means we've got guests that have just left and we're waiting our new guests to come in. And so I believe this is actually on the orientation day when we actually do like <laughs> safety talks and that type of thing. And um, the dinner after that safety talk, when you have a tornado like this happen, um, it can, the conversation can be a, a little bit of a bummer, but you know, <laughs> we're lucky that we have guests that are, you know, so educated about these things. Um, and we obviously have hope for the future for our tours, but man, they really sting when they're like this, but to get back to the photo, um, I mean, if I had to nitpick it just from other stuff I've seen, I know that they're kind of on the darker side right here. I think that there was a little bit of extra contrasting done to really get that tornado to darken up quite a bit. Um, I think as far as detail and sharpness, um, especially in the foreground, it's very well done. Um, it looks tack sharp. Really like that a lot. And kind of like yeah. Mike mentioned, it's nice to see the, the red and blue uh, on the law enforcement vehicle that's up front there. Again, giving a little bit more perspective and um, looks like probably one of those, you know, deals where you pull over and you, you've got this tornado in front of you and everything's hectic and you take the shot then. So yep. uh, kudos to the photographer for at least dialing in their focus and, and, a, and an overall really, you know, well done shot in a moment that was probably pretty hectic. Yeah, I agree with both you guys. This looks like a hectic tornado alley tornado luck luckily the one thing is it looks a lot meaner than it was like it was a big weak tornado right. so but you can't tell from this picture like uh you know that's what's great about stills but uh love the uh, hailstones like you said Lo i like the power lines i like yeah. it feels it makes me feel like oh i wish i was there uh he did a vignette it looks like in post and I kind of like it you know it's yeah. like a, a little bit of a film vignette but I, maybe i would have backed that off a little yeah. bit and and also like what nick said is i maybe i wouldn't have had it quite so dark but i wouldn't want the photographer to listen to that because that <laughs> might not you know what i mean it's like that's yeah. a little nitpicky preference thing and and whatever the photographer did i love that it's not the crazy saturated colors that that you see everywhere so yep. a plus awesome job congratulations <laughs> on this amazing catch and on a two percent day Ugh. that was zero percent prior to that uh Mark, <laughs> And this is also proof that, like, I was really close to this tornado. I was right next to it on the other side. And that's proof that being close is not the best. I wish I was back here next yeah. to this photographer. This is a much better shot than what I had back here. Yeah. Yeah, Texas, you did find though. Texas panhandle, doing Texas panhandle things. Yes, that's right. Um, and it's pretty interesting. This photo was shot at ISO 8000. And really? one one five hundredth of a second. So I think that's was that's a cool. Sony. That's a Sony. <laughs> uh, actually, it says a Nikon D seven eighty. So I don't know. It's oh. like it doesn't look like it's super you know grainy for being that high. Mm -hmm. But I think because it was such a fast shutter speed, you know, you're able to capture. There's like the hailstones in the air, um, some yeah. debris or something. Maybe that's hail falling here. But um, it allow and it allows the tornado to look sharper as well because that thing is just moving so fast. That's the tough part with tornadoes. You get there and it's dark like this. You you can even make out there's a little bit of light here, I think, from headlights probably. Yeah. And okay. so it's so dark that you end up with slow shutter speeds. And so the tornado is yeah. moving and then you've got that, you know, motion. And that's and that's kind of tough. So if you can freeze it, you know, that's that's pretty good. So all right. So we'll get on to this uh, picture. It's a very um, interesting, unique situation. Um Obviously, like looking at the settings, it was at F-18 and um, I, they were obviously probably trying to get lighting. I'm assuming a lightning trigger on there with such a narrow aperture. So maybe they knew um, lightning was pretty active with this and they would try. Because generally, if you got a tornado like that, you're probably not going to throw on a lightning trigger um, unless you really think that's happening. 
Um, but other, I mean, it's such a unique photo. The only quibble I really have is just some of the editing. It's a little grainy um, and you can kind of see like, it's one of those things that's really easy to do with the shadow slider and stuff is to introduce, you know, this bright kind of like halo-y thing here where the tornadoes yeah. probably should be dark all the way down. And, and that's just one of those things you, you learn in, in, in Photoshop or if you're doing it in Lightroom and it's global, it doesn't look like it was global, which is what's interesting because over here, I don't really see it. So it's just one of those things you've got to like kind of look back and go, does that look right? And, um, and make sure you kind of balance that out. But, but such a, you know, interesting, unique shot, which is why it made our top 10. Yeah. I th and kind of Hank and I were talking about, I was kind of saying, I don't really think I've ever seen like um, smooth channel lightning specifically next to a tornado, which is right. um, really interesting in itself. But then you've got this precip core that's bisecting the photo in half, yeah. which is really interesting. And then you've got a lot of detail with kind of some storm structure over here. And I certainly could get in there and, and nitpick a little bit of that to really kind yeah. of tend to see some of those issues up in that uh, detail in the, in the storm structure there. But yeah, uh, whatever this, this was land spout or, you know, hybrid mesocyclonic land spout, yeah. whatever you want to call this super cool to see a tornado with the smooth channel lightning there. Um, and, but I, you know, one of the things I'd have to say is that this might be one of those photos that, you know, if it got shared around general public that, you know, they'd look at this and be like, that's fake. Yep. And yeah. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, and, exactly. Yep. yep. That's you know a compliment. Mean? Yeah, and I and absolutely, I think it's a cop compliment for the photographer on this one because it just looks so wild. It's just this, you know, smooth channel lightning, beautiful tornado, and uh, yeah. So I think it's a really cool photo. Yeah, and I'm going to argue that I don't think he was on a trigger. I think he snapped that lightning. It's ah. a positive flash. They're around for a long time. Yeah. I think he might have caught it because it's beating. If if it was on a well, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, you're right. Triggers, uh, like it's on the last stage. So yeah, like, it does you know feel like that. Triggers. Yeah. So the, the first of it would have been a solid channel, but it looks like it's starting to, the segments are starting to break up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it might be. You might be right. Well, yeah, if it's I don't smooth know. channel, there wouldn't be anything else other than, yeah, just fading. Right. So. Or maybe his trigger isn't that good and it missed. The <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Sometimes those, those you know, it just, it, it misses. Sometimes bolts are so fast that you just aren't going to get the whole thing. And, and and if you've got a camera that will fire off a bunch of shots every time the trigger fires, sometimes you catch the the second shot will catch it, which is interesting. Yeah. Unless it's a video get grab. Maybe it's like a one of those uh, red yeah. 8K video grabs. Yeah, well, it I says would... a Nikon D850, but you could still be shooting video with it. Yeah, I'm sure. That's interesting that's... that you say that because I just really zoomed in on where that lightning meets the surface there. And there's there's a little bit of digitization that would either be like a camera that maybe isn't as high of resolution or possibly I was thinking something like that. Maybe a, yeah. maybe a still, but yeah. Or he didn't give us or Dropbox isn't giving us the, uh, yeah, True. but Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I agree with you guys on the uh, the halo underneath the tornado. Like, yeah. there, Mike has tutorials on how to do that better. I suck at it. I try to do that. <laughs> Mine look just like that. So, uh, well, you know I, what? It's 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 one of those things that, as you know, when you take it, it's like your videos that you do. You you take your time to get those right for like months until they're perfect. And so that's the same kind of thing, you know. Um, with the you know the photographers that are kind of help judge this contest is is we are taking the time to get it right and so sometimes it's really easy to go in Lightroom and do a few sliders and not want to take the time to get it right and so right. there's so that's just kind of the balance of what do you want to do do you want to kind of um, you know quick and dirty get a photo out or do you want to take your time and and get it perfect and yeah um, that's that that's stuff yeah. you learn with time. And it's like, you know, even with me now, I think, you know, it's coming up on 11 years that I've been doing storm photography and I still have to like wrestle with the old Nick to like do those old things that I used to do. And it's like, <laughs> it's grabbing the clarity and the, te <laughs> and about the texture stuff. And yep. so sometimes you really have to reel yourself in on that. I wouldn't put it past myself to take a worse photo of this particular moment that this, this photographer did. <laughs> Um, just to be completely honest, like I look back at my stuff from 2016 and I feel like it's some of the best stuff I've ever done. So it, the, the point is, is that it's just you're constantly evolving in this, whatever you do um, yeah. and hopefully getting better. So agree. Agree. All right. So this next one, um, I absolutely love it. Um, my only uh, I think my gripe when I first look at it, just it feels a little dark, but actually look at the histogram. It's more, you know, kind of in the middle. But 
we were all talking when we first saw this one about um, just how peaceful I yeah. feel when I yeah. look at this. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a beautiful water spout. And then this little, and it's very sharp because you can make out this boat. Boat. Racing away yeah. from you. You can even see the, the water plume behind it or whatever. So you can see what direction it's going. Um, this is just, um, it's just a beautiful, calm, peaceful, and like non-dangerous, I'm assuming, tornado. Because a lot of times these don't even really knock over boats or anything. Right. You know, so this is just a beautiful capture. And you're up high, so you get to see all this depth to it. Mm. It's just really yeah. great. So I, I'm a big uh, water spout fan. Uh, the first tornadoes that I ever saw were actually water spouts off the coast of Solana Beach in California when I was a Crazy. tiny little kid. And my grandfather, who is from Kansas, absolutely loved weather. He kept a diary of daily weather. He had a weather station and all sorts of stuff. So this is a long time ago. This would have been back in the mid 80s because I'm old. <laughs> uh, and so I've, I've always had a thing for water spouts. But just looking at this photo, what I really like, peaceful is a great description for it absolutely it just, and i really like the juxtaposition of color it's very kind of pastel monotone yeah. and so it's really cool to see a photo of a tornado because water spouts are tornadoes um that is calm and most yeah. of the time you see a photo of a tornado and it's just pure mayhem right so it's very cool um i wonder if the photographer was standing on like a cliff or um, I'd have to imagine that they were because it looks like they've really got some height over this thing, which is an interesting yeah. perspective. It means that you're looking like bang on at the middle of the condensation funnel, um, which I think is a really unique uh, perspective, too. But like from a critiquing standpoint, I think there's a little bit of noise in there and that type of thing. But overall, I think it's a beautiful photo. This is a photo I would like to have on my wall personally. Absolutely. It's my favorite one so far. Um, it, this is the one that I'm envious of the most. Even They've all been great. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank that boat for being there. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just like call that guy and say, thank you. That really adds, adds a lot. I love that he didn't oversaturate it. It's just like real natural colors. Maybe it's dark. Maybe it's not. I love what the artist did with it. And, uh, I was wondering, like, that's pretty damn high. Do we know where this came from? Because I was in wondering. In Italy. It's in, okay. um, yeah, okay. I was thinking in Italy. I, I wow. can't name the town because I am not good at Rio Major. <laughs> Rio Major, Major. I don't know. Something like that. But Okay. Because if you were going to say it was Florida, then I was going to say that might be a drone. <laughs> yeah. Like a camera on a drone, maybe. But yeah. yeah. That's, that's the, I, I love it. I, I can't say. I just wish that was mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, been, it's been pretty interesting doing this contest for three years now where the really good water spout photos we get are rarely, if ever, from near us. They're all yeah. over in Europe. So Italy and Greece, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They, have, they seem to have the best. Speaking of, here's a, another water spout that um, I'm assuming is um, – I can't remember if someone said Barcelona, but I like to look these up because I don't know the, um, the towns over there as well as I should, but um, – there's something really cool about this one because it's it's um and, and and I know it's a water spout. It looks like it's in the water, but it's just looming in the darkness behind this town. Yeah. And they didn't um I think when Den Dennis was talking about it on one of our critiques that he could have seen them trying to bring up the brightness of that to make it stand out more. And I might have even wanted to do that. And I kind of am just really happy that they kept it more kind of tucked away. Agreed. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I 100 percent agree with your assessment there that it's nice that they didn't try and really I mean, that, like you said, it'd probably be one of the thir first things I try to do is get in there and get that tornado a little bit brighter. But right. it really looks as shot. It looks like, you know, if we were standing there, that would be our perspective. You could tell that the photo was well taken by all of these the city lights that are in front here. You've got a stadium with those lights on. And so it's well shot. It's tack yep. sharp properly yes. exposed and they didn't mess with it so um and again sucker for the water spouts i think we have another photo from probably this same water spout later on here yeah it could it actually could be i'd like to actually look that up this is this is definitely barcelona um so so we'll see if the other one is so that's uh, yeah it's really interesting that there were two photographers there at the same. I can't imagine that this person moved quickly enough for this. One, for this one. <laughs> no. Well, quick. the other picture is seemed like it would be from the complete opposite side of it, like 20 miles away when we see the next picture. So I'm not quite sure. 
Yeah, this one, when I was first looking at these, it's one of the ones that really stuck out to me. Um, it's it's a really cool photo for sure. Amazing shot. Everything that you guys said, I love that he didn't try to blast it out and, and, and separate it from the background any more than it is. Yep. Uh, I can hear air traffic control right now in Spanish going, <laughs> uh, peligro. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. That's what it should be called, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, love it. Yeah, it is tack sharp. And there's a little, you're right about the airport, and a little Doppler radar there just for us weather nerds to be excited oh, cool. about. Yeah, when you zoom in. So um, probably the airport. Oh, there's one. the Doppler. Oh, oh, yeah. man. oh, man, that might even been a shot. Like, yeah. Oh, you know what? Cropping in. On the Doppler, yeah. Like cropping the, 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 uh, the uh, airport out and having just the Doppler in like a vertical. Yeah. It's looking really good on my screen, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, I'm loving that. Yeah, yeah. I would. And say, it's it's actually sharp enough that you could do. Um, yeah, like, I'm like liking that. the. Um, I mean, that's just a, pro, a dumb yeah. preference. So tell yeah. artists, don't listen to us. You're doing yeah great right. on your own. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So yeah, so this is um, um now that you brought it up, I'm gonna have to look it up to see. I don't oh, know if it's the same, God. but this oh one's, man, they this one's me bay. I like this one. Yeah, um, I like this one. Where is the uh, 904? Yeah, it says Barcelona, sep September yeah. 16th. So what was the other one? I want to see if it was the same day. Because um, the funnel. September, si September 16th. So okay. so the person in this shot is is on the complete opposite side. And the really interesting thing is that, that it's it's shot well like the other person did too. Yes. Like, they're, like their style and even their editing looks very similar, which is why that was so strange to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one is definitely a lot, obviously, further away. I, when I first saw this photo, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it looks cool. And then I'm, my eyes are immediately drawn down to the fact like, oh, there's a water spout or tornado um, underneath it. And to for me, getting a shot like this with – there's stars up there. There's the whole storm lit up by a lightning bolt. Even, you know, the little fingers, filaments coming yeah. out. And then you see that there's also a tornado underneath it is, um, again, the only thing I said about it was I think you could crop it to the left a little bit to put the, the thunderstorm more center. But otherwise, like, what a, you know, what an amazing capture. I mean, that's just astounding. Yeah, I'm I'm a big time sucker for nighttime isolated storms that are yeah. illuminated by lightning <laughs> on the interior. Um, it's absolutely amazing to see that glow. It's like, uh, you know, people get those lights for their house with the like puffy clouds and the, yeah. the, the light illuminates from them. And it, and so it's it's so awesome to see a photo like that. And this would look great as a print. Um, again, like we kind of talked about with the last photo, it's very well taken. The lights, you can see everything's tack sharp. And then finally, you're drawn to the tornado uh, yeah. if you really look hard enough, which which is super awesome. So, like one of the things I had to think about was if we take the tornado away from this photo, is it still an amazing photo? And and it really kind of is, but it kind yeah. of begs for maybe like a really nice bolt coming out the side or something yeah. like that. So then you have to you know question, well, this is a, a tornado photo competition, and and yeah. is having a very small tornado not being the main subject matter enough to keep this photo up in the rankings and so that's something that i'm kind of you know wrestling with a little bit is that i'm not getting tornado as number one thing when i look at this photo but i love everything else about it yeah. um, and i do think that there's something to be said for the fact that you kind of find the tornado after and it, and it is there and it is a tornado photo so yeah um, th this one definitely ranks very high with me yeah this is my by far my favorite um nick do you remember in 2015 in november the pampa outbreak the ef3s yep. it was there uh, yeah. so you had the twin you had the ef3s on the two different storm afterwards there was a trailing whatever you call that shape a stovepipe tornado uh right in over pampa that got illuminated by the light I saw those photos. right so and i didn't get a photo of it but i got but that's what it looked like so i'm going back to that pampa yeah uh after the wedge you had this like trailing it might have even been anticyclonic. I don't know. So, but uh, yeah, Jenny Brown. So, yeah, Jenny uh, Brown does ex an excellent photo that night. And I was I have an interesting story about that night. It's kind of funny. And, and I was chasing with Reed, um, and it was just him and I on that storm. And we were really trying to make up some time and, and get down underneath the storm to actually get close to that tornado. And 
I remember like rolling down the window and looking up and I'm like, Reed, I can see stars. Like you've got to stop. You've got to stop for just, <laughs> just, just give me 30 seconds. You got to stop on this one. I have to shoot it here like this. And he's like, no, we got to get under the school. <laughs> Reed style. Can't, but it's Reed style. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but I remember like a couple of days later after he saw like Jenny Brown's photo, he was like, I should have, I should have stopped a little bit. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, it, it's a funny story on that one, but yeah, yeah that, was, that was a great chase. <laughs> yeah, Gene Moore, I think, got some shots of the whole like mm -hmm. this of the whole storm structure and yeah. the, the tornado underneath it. So that's something I've always wanted at night. You've got the beautiful lightning, you've got it exposed perfectly. Um, yeah, uh, I think if you walked into like a gallery on a beach that has like neat, pretty nature photos, I think the average person. If you had this shot next to the the Crowell, how do you say the town name? I think that's Crowell. right. Crowell. Crowell. Yeah. Okay. The the shot earlier of the blue and then the red. Yeah. I think the average non storm chaser is going to respond to that, mm -hmm. you know, because they yeah. don't see that all the time like we do. Yeah. You know, we see that all the time. I know I'm responding to that, man. That's something that would be one of those shots that I I've always dreamed of getting a shot like this. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I've been trying to do one of those for a while. It, it takes a lot of unique things to happen. I mean, to have a storm be isolated and, and have uh, be completely convective with lightning. And then the storms typically have to be very low topped, you know, somewhere around 30,000 feet or right around there. Um, so it takes a yeah, lot. And you got to stop. Underneath. And you then to have stop. a tornado underneath. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah, stop. All right. So congrats to that uh, photographer. And we got two more. Um, this is another Morton tornado. Um, I like this one. You can obviously tell that the white balance is totally different than the other one we saw before. And so right. I don't know for sure because I wasn't under there. I know. I the, was. That's, this is more true to yeah. the, I think. Yeah. This it was is a little more what it looked like. It was definitely more um, very dusty. So you're obviously thinking it's going to be a little bit more like this color, like brown and stuff. But I like this one because they did not do anything crazy to it. Um, there's not a lot of insane contrast. It's very noisy, um, but I'm yeah. sure they were shooting at a crazy high ISO just to get a quick shot of it because the tornado, it's kind of like the other one, the ISO 8000 that was very, you know, frozen in a way because you think because you're so close and it's moving so fast. So and then the tractor in there is perfection. I think my little nitpick is, of course, is like I hate these little white things in the road and I would have just quickly yeah. boop, boop, content yeah. wear those out which to me doesn't change anything at all. And then otherwise um, I love the tractor and I love the tornado and I love the other cars when, to me with tornado shots. I don't care about the fact that you're on a road and there's cars in the, in the scene. No, you know, that to me is part of the storytelling that you're doing. So this is just great. Yeah. And I think from like a rule of thirds perspective, it's really kind of nice to see that like center line coming from the bottom left corner of the photo and the roads kind of sweeping right. out this way. I, and it's nice to see a, a tractor out there. That's yeah. very, tornado alley right yeah but, uh, <laughs> i had you know as far as gripes i had the same gripes i do see quite a bit of noise in here i think that that's something that maybe you know like topaz could help them out with a little yeah. bit and really clean that up quite a bit um agreed on the exposure color all looks spot on um, yeah. although i wasn't there um that really echoes the rest of, of what i'd seen there but you know if i had to nitpick this one i would say just some of those issues and noise could have really been cleaned up a little bit better there but um, yeah, it's a cool photo. Um, there's it's sharp, but I wouldn't say it's tack sharp either. There's yeah. if you look out there just a little bit. But again, we're splitting yeah. hairs here. Like for yeah. anybody who has <laughs> never taken a photo of a tornado at somewhat close range. I mean, I'm talking like within a mile or two or something like that. Um, obviously, those moments, they're very fleeting. Your heartbeat is going to be going a thousand miles an hour. And there's so much going on that taking a flawless photo of a tornado is so difficult it's and so difficult. and obviously when we're dealing with these low light conditions we're we're trying to get as much as we can out of our shutter and sometimes the 1 80th of a second um, photo is not going to do well you're going to start to get some blurring because that motion inside the tornado and the color cloud is so fast that it's very difficult so to get all the things perfect is very difficult to do um, and so when anybody can get even close that's got to be an exemplary task to take a photo like that so Absolutely. Yeah. I love the story. Like you said, I love the cars, you know, on the side of the road, the brake lights, the, the tractor, like this is a tornado alley. Again, if I was a kid who had never mm -hmm. seen a tornado and was only dreaming of seeing a tornado, 
and you see this and you see, I, you, I remember you would see the, the power lines that just continue to go on forever in the distance, you know, like, and, uh, and yeah, I would really respond to like, wow, like they're real, you know, that's a line from the movie Supercell, like yeah. they're real, like that's yeah. really right. happening. Right. Yeah. I yeah. got no complaints. The, I love that they didn't do the crazy uh, saturation and, and, yep. and clarity. I always love that. Uh, the grass, that's what grass looks like. You know, it's yeah. not crazy fluorescent green. Well, sometimes it is out there, actually. It you is. You know, in, 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 in the Platte River Valley in June, it's <laughs> it's stupid green. So, uh, yeah, yeah, love it. That's what makes me feel like the white balance is pretty correct is because mm -hmm. when you just cover up the tornado and look at the foreground, that the road and the grass, they all look like the right color, even the tractor. So, right. um, agreed. And, and the stuff with the noise, that's really, that's like one of those things that, you know, do you need to do the noise reduction? Do you not? Like, because you, you shot it, it's grainy. Sometimes, you know, if this was like a black and white photo on like a big canvas, you wouldn't even care about the grain because that's like part of like that, you know, black and white kind of vibe. Sure. And so, and just because it's color to me is like, yeah, there's definitely like splotchy kind of, you know, that kind of thing. But it's the situation that uh, you had to, you had to have the ISO up. And I'm sure that if I was there, I would have jumped out of the car to get, you know, a shot like this and probably had, you know, just as much noise because yeah, honestly, I don't know what I would have done. I, this is just so great. <laughs> I would have wanted to time lapse it and I bet I'd be getting hit with hail and I wouldn't have been able to do that anyway. And I'd probably be upset. And then you would have gotten behind and then you're like back yeah. in the car and then you didn't even get the shot. You That's know? exactly. You know what? I got it. This is you. We can edit this out or don't, but you know what I would have done right here. I would have got out and thought, I, if I don't pee right now, I'm going to pee in my pants because I've been holding it. For <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, and then the wind's blowing out. That's what people don't realize is storm chasers were covered in piss. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no safe place to piss under that's, these storms. That's how you know when it's really windy is when you face away and you still get hit. Yeah, it's, it's going everywhere. You've know? all been course, there. It's, it's, Even it's the lady the one safe right? place is pointing right at traffic. You know, like, no. hey, everybody. Ah. Now I have to decide if I'm including that in the video or not. It's going to be really That's funny. Real. <laughs> We're being real here. Hey, all our artists are being real with their colors and their. Yeah, their, yeah, 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 yeah. So we got to keep it real. Hey. If we can get really real. I once had a live stream and someone parked in front of me and they got out and, and I was talking to someone else in front and they got out and peed behind my car right on my live stream and, and, oh, and, and nice. pulled their like you know, pants out. So that was fantastic. I'm like, oh, I think I will have to. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, all right. So we're here. The last photo. Um, to me, like, yeah, I'll, I like a lot of the other ones for sure. Um, there was something about mm -hmm. this when I first saw it that this was probably my favorite of all of them. Just because obviously this person is very close. This is a this is a pretty wide angle lens, and the tornado is just right there in the field. Um, the perspective with the or the composition, I guess, with the yeah. turbine right there, showing the size of this, you know, thing. And, and obviously from the other photos, we've gotten to see like it's not that much taller than that. You know, it's definitely you know about you know two more turbines taller or something, but. There's just, this is kind of the the raw, like, it, coolness of a close tornado photo that I, you know, I would, I never get that close. And I would love to get, you know, some, a shot like this someday, just one time. And, um, and, you know, this photo has some issues where the, you know, the edges are a little soft, but the middle's sharp. Um, it probably means they were pretty wide open to try to um, get a fast shutter speed, you know, the debris is in the air, but I just love the fact that we're kind of looking up into this thing. And you know, you all know, if you shoot with a wide angle, generally that means it's kind of right there in front of you and yeah. you can see how this tornado is bending upwards. Um, so this, they're, they're just like right underneath it. It's just, this is just incredible. I think that it would be hard for someone that wasn't a storm chaser to realize exactly what's happening in this photo and, and specifically how close they are. And obviously we try and capture that. And if you really get down there where you can really see it is when you look down at the debris yeah. cloud and you can see how close it is to get that type of definition and detail and little bits of debris flying around. And, you know, this person looks like I'd say they're probably within 200 yards, possibly even closer yeah. than that. Um, yeah. And so the presence of mind, um, I luckily have had an opportunity to take a photo of a tornado very similar to this. And um, I did not have the frame of mind that it <laughs> produced a photo like this with this type of clarity. 
Um, it's well shot. Again, going back to the rule of thirds, boom, you've got a turbine right in the middle of the shot. And of course, the propellers are almost perfectly perpendicular yeah. to the tornado. Um, so yeah, if you were actually there looking at this and you're not looking through a wide angle, you guys would be like, you'd have a tornado in your face uh, yeah. on this one. So um, wonderful photo to have the presence of mind to capture it, um, be well within focus, well exposed, um, any nitpicking on it might just be again with that contrast and bringing in that blue a little bit there. But, um, I'm wondering if this is the same photographer that took our early. No, it's a different photographer. So, okay. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, for me, this one's it's, it's way up there yeah. for sure. So it's a great photo. Yeah. I drive right by that photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should have stopped are. and got out. Here they are right here. Whoever this person is, I think that's them. Okay. Oh, let's so, see. Hold on. I, I, I'll I show you. Can, oh, you, see the, can yeah. you see the screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they're there. That's Brandon <laughs> Ivy. Yeah. And then here's that. Here's that. Uh, oh, yeah. That, and then here's where I was. Hang on. I'm turning around. Yeah. Right wow. there. Oh. So, yeah. So I think he was, yeah, to my right. Yeah. Just to your right a little bit. Yeah. Also, yeah. probably with Brandon Ivy's group. Or yeah, right. He's with Brandon Ivy's group, right? Yeah. Actually, sure. I think it's a girl. I think her name's Trisha, if I recall. Oh, Trisha, so, well done. Yeah, good job, Trisha. Yeah, I mean, let's see if I can get Trisha. I've got, I've got to get her. I've got Brandon Ivy getting out of the car. Well, that, <laughs> you showing us that gave us a really good idea of. Like, oh yeah, they're on a tripod. Yeah, and how close yeah. they were. Yeah, Six there they are. There. Yes. Well, good for Brandon, man. I, I love Brandon. You know, there's two or companies we really get along with. And Brandon's a great guy. Um, love Brandon, you know, yeah. love, Brandon, love Tempest and Brandon. We're always waving to each other when we're out there. It's good. All you guys, really. people ask me, they say what tour? And I, I don't know, because you're all you're all so cool and so good at what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been sold out for a while. My tours have been sold out <laughs> since last July. And so when people come to me, I send them to uh, to Brandon and Tempest. Nice. That's great. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to knock points off of her because she's on a tour, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> because some of these other be guys points. were like, yeah, I mean, you got to, got to, some of these guys did it on their own. You can't, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. I mean, that, yeah. there's, there is something to be said for that, but there's also a lot of people that, um, that are on tours that, um, they're just learning. So this person obviously knew exactly what to do in this situation. And, true, true. Um, Sorry, Trish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you know what? Um, that's how, and, and and that's also how people learn. Is also you know going on. Sometimes they go on tours for for a little bit, learn a little bit, and then they go out and do it on their own. But oh, highly um, recommend it. If, yeah, if you're I, thinking about chasing, please go on a tour first, and yeah. you won't have to wait seven years to see your first tornado like I did. We oh, can yes. pack we can pack so much information into your brain having you out there for a week yeah. or ten days. It's incredible. With yeah. pros. Yeah. With pros who've been doing it for a long right. time. Yeah, guy, both these guys, Mike and Olbinski and Blake, if you're thinking about chasing, do a tour. It will save you money. Yeah. 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 Really well, well because I tell people all the time, like you can condense like three years of like seasonal chasing information into like 10 days with us. We took a guy chasing for a few years, came out twice, and then he moved to Colorado and chases on his own now. And he did the same thing, learned with us, figured out how it worked, learned the whole, you know, system and forecasting yeah. and all that stuff. And now he does it on his own. And yeah, um, there's a there's a great. lot of other people out there too, like Shannon Beliski, uh, Jen mm -hmm. Walton. These are all people that have gone on tours with us in the past. Really? Yeah, they've all made wow. great. Jen tours. Walton went on tour with you? Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was kind of recently. Uh, I wouldn't say recently. I want to say like 2017 or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's kind of how it awesome. all starts for a lot of people. Great. And look movie. what happened. You took her on a tour, taught her what to do, and now girls who chase is right. exploding, and she's exploding. So you know, what Daniel Shaw that, started it, off. Yeah, on yep. tours. He did. Yeah, yeah. Alec Alec Skolton, um, who you know is guided with us for forever, has been an ETT guide even before me. He went on a tour as a kid in 2007, and he's a young guy. Yeah, and he so, is. Yeah, the, wow. the tours are great. Yeah, don't hesitate. You don't have to go on my tours, but if you go with the good people, you know you're going to yep. do a lot. Agree. Yeah. Well, all right. Those are our finalists. Nick, Hank, thanks for being here. Thanks for your input. Uh, I really love having like my probably my two favorite tornado guys oh. out there. Um, 
commenting on these with your perspective and your and thoughts and especially getting the cool stuff like, yeah, that's the right white balance that day. Um, yeah. Even though I'm kind of sad that um, you were that close and I wasn't, but I got a good time lapse anyway of the dust. So was there nice. you go. <laughs> Man, when well, I got in here, I just wanted to like hang out with you guys for a little bit, you know, I just want yeah. to. Maybe grab a beer or something. Yeah. We need to do that. We need Shoot to do that. Crap, you know. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to do another stream where uh, somebody's uh, urinating on the stream. So I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and, and hang up before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I gotta pee. Go to pick up kids from school. So you thank know. you both so much. I appreciate it, and um, I'm sure I'm gonna see y'all in like a month anyway. So I hope so. Yeah. See you in the right. mezzo. Bye. Yeah. Be safe.